my dear masters, my dear guards, welcome to all of you for the today's evening session, the Holistic Wellness Program, 21 days. Before starting the session, my sincere pronouns to my beloved Guruji, Pramarsi Patriji, the great pronouns to Mother Babaji and all the astral masters, and all the pyramid masters across the world. <clears throat> Friends, today so we are going to start our session now yes so it's a one hour program friends today one hour program in one hour so we are going to do meditation for 40 45 minutes deep continuous meditation with melodious music afterwards 15 20 minutes will be sharing of wisdom today's wisdom is how to live at the current moment mindfully the mindfulness okay that's our topic at last we'll see that sharing of wisdom will do at last now, so let's see the meditation, right, friends. So all of you know the meditation, how to do, how to practice the meditation, right? So let's start that without further delay. So maybe before starting the meditation, I'll try to teach you a small mudra, that is prana mudra, okay? So what is prana mudra? I think you might be knowing, many of you might be knowing prana mudra, okay? Prana mudra is like this, see, simple. The both hands, with the both hands you have to practice, these two fingers, these two, that is ring finger and uh, little finger and the uh, the other finger. Just touch gently like this. And other two fingers tight like this. This, this is the prana mudra. What it does? It improves your pranic, pranic force, prana shakti. Friends, always remember prana shakti will be enhanced in your energy body. Very, very essential mudra. So this has got many, many benefits, not one benefit. Again, let me tell you, whenever you feel weakness, right? And you want to get all the vitamins, A, B, C, D, K, whatever <clears throat> vitamins, okay? Even uh, sometimes what happens is, uh, if you find a blood, blood is oozing out through urine and, uh, you know, the, the, even the stools, that also controls. So it has got highest benefits. Okay, I will send you the complete details and one uh, video I'll send you. So try to follow that. But whenever, whenever you find time, whenever you find time, so let's say you, you have no work or you are not occupied or you are just going somewhere, just keep, keep it like this. And you know, even while walking also you can, for example, you are walking, uh, you're walking in a daily morning, right? In the park or garden, wherever, in the road, just keep it, keep it like this. Just keep, in the sitting time, what happened? You have to keep like this and keep on the both thighs. Okay. On the thighs, you keep it and start practicing. That's the that's a way to practice. Otherwise, while walking, also just with the free hands, the free hands which are just you know hanging, and then uh, keep this mudra, keep walking. So that both purposes will have that uh, one will be walking will over, and then the this mudra also you'll be doing, and you'll get highest amount of prana shakti, pranic force. So this is going to keep you completely healthy, friends. Right, it will avoid many many diseases. I'm telling you, all the diseases, not, not one or two diseases. Right, it's a wonderful mudra. Okay, let's continue that. So now we'll go into the meditation, friends. So not with not with further delay. Let's start meditation. Anapanasati meditation. So all of you sit straight, sit comfortable. Your back must be erected. Okay, and uh, make yourself you know comfortable. Sit erected. Back erected and remove spectacles and uh, these two 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 hands like you know, clasping hands fingers into fingers and then keep on the thighs and down side both legs must cross like this feet must be crossed if you are sitting on the chair or sofa must be crossed like this or if you are sitting on the floor directly keep on mat or otherwise one uh, any one cloth on the top of that you sit but sit in the sukhasana. That is the way you sit for a, you know, having food, consuming food, right? Sit in that way. That's also good. Okay. Now, your seat directed, back directed, and remove spectacles. Make make around your reversal, you know, darker as much as possible. And no more sounds should be coming out from outside. And drink one glass of water. Then sit comfortably and slowly close your eyes. Slowly close your eyes. Everybody, close your eyes. I find uh, <clears throat> Manoj, Manoj, I find a lot of uh, lighting around you, I think so. Always, yes, good, good. <clears throat> Not to have much light because it doesn't give you the effect of meditation. It will uh, hamper your uh, meditation 
deepness. Basically, we want to go deep inside, isn't it? We have to, we have to experience the deeperness, consciousness, basically. That's very, very important, the part of meditation. Okay? Yes, friends. All of you, please gently close the eyes. So, no more opening eyes now. Gently close your eyes. Gently close your eyes. Just keep going inside. I keep guiding you. Yes, yes. Sit comfortably. Close your eyes. Now, start observing your breath. Start observing your natural, simple breath, my dear friends. Natural, simple, tender, tranquil, soft, peaceful breath. Go on, observe. Don't force any breath. No more force in the breath. No exhalation, no inhalation, no kumbhaka, no rechaka. Simple, natural flow of breath. Keep observing. That's all. That is meditation. That is simple meditation. Breath meditation. We call it as Anapanasati meditation. Buddha has uh, discovered it. Buddha has invented this meditation and taught to the entire world. This meditation is Anapanasati. Ana means in breathing, apana means out breathing, sati means be with them. Comfortably go on observe the breath. If any distraction comes on the observation of the breath, if you are distracted by any other thoughts, negative thoughts, positive, whatever may be, any thought it may be, negative thought, maybe positive thought, whatever it may be. Nothing is required. When you are doing meditation, no more requirement of any thought. No thought is required when you are in the meditation. Simple observation of the breath. Since we have to go inside, the deep inside. Keep observing the breath. Three laws of meditation. There are three laws of meditation. Three laws of meditation. The first law of meditation says, when you are with the breath, when you go on observe the breath, thoughts will come down. Slowly, slowly, thoughts will come down. Still, if you are keep observing the breath, then you are completely, all the thoughts will be becoming zero. Slowly, slowly. When the mind becomes completely empty, you receive, there is a second law of meditation, you receive huge amount of cosmic energy. There is a second law says, third law of meditation, it says, when you receive huge amount of cosmic energy, your nodding cleansing happens. Nodding cleansing happens, eventually your third eye gets activated, your intuition gets activated, you get astral travel. All the chakras gets activated. So many, so many benefits. When you cleanse the entire nadis, all the 272,000 nadis are there in the energy body. Go on, observe the breath. Please observe the breath. Keep your observation on the breath. Be a witness. Witness to the breath. No alteration in the breath. Natural breath, do not alter. Just go on, observe. That's all. I'll also play the melodious music now. If at all you are distracted by any more thoughts, just observe the music. Observe the music, listen to the music. That will take away all your thoughts. It will remove the thoughts. Again, come back to the breath. Being with the breath, that's our intention, that's our goal. Being with the breath all the time throughout meditation. Sometimes you are distracted with the more and more thoughts. Just listen to the music. Go on, observe the breath, friends. Go on, observe. Any thoughts, whatever thought it may be, just cut off the thought. Come back to the breath again. We do not need any thought. Negative, positive, miraculous, nothing. We need zero thoughts. We need sunyasthiti in our mind. Manomaya kosha. It has to be empty. It has to be vacated. 
that's our aim. In the emptiness, there is a God. The emptiness is called godliness. The emptiness is called soul consciousness, my dear friends. If you go on observe the term emptiness, you are going on getting access to the emptiness. You are getting access to the godliness. Your own God. Your soul consciousness itself is your own God. That is the real God. There is no God outside, friends. All outside gods, whatever we pray, they are all symbolization. That is not the real God. Of course, in every stone, every element in this universe contains the godliness. Every particle, minute particle in this universe contains, is embedded, is a part of godliness, part of this cosmos. Without cosmic energy, without the soul consciousness, nothing exists in this world. Similarly, in, inside of us also, inside of us also, there is a consciousness, soul consciousness. We need to realize that's the purpose of our birth. That's the purpose of any human birth. Anytime, in any yuga, after any number of years, after a huge number of time, huge amount of time, whenever it may be, at whatever it may be, the purpose of human, every human birth on this planet, in this whole cosmos, on any planet in this galaxy and other galaxy, the only, the ultimate goal of human birth is to realize his own God, to realize himself. To get in touch with his own soul consciousness, connect to his own soul consciousness. He need to realize he is an Atman, he is Atman, he is only Atman, he is not a physical body. That is the true realization, my dear friends. We need to try day in, day out, keep doing meditation. You will get access to that. Without fail, you will get access to that. No doubt on that. You don't need to doubt on anything or anything like that. You are the true Atma Padartha. Nothing else in this world other than you, nothing else exists. You are there everywhere, not only inside of you. You are also there everywhere. Everything is same. Everything is Atma Padartha, Brahma Padartha in this entire cosmos, entire Brahmanda, the entire creation has got only Brahma Padartha, Atma Padartha. You don't need to feel any separation between one body to other body, one animal being to other animal being. We are all living beings. All are interconnected. All are made up of same material. The raw material which is made up of all the living beings is nothing but soul consciousness, my dear friends. Without soul consciousness, nothing exists in this physical form, in this world, in this cosmos. There is no question of any separation between any one living being to other living being, one human being to other human being. We are all one and the same. We are all connected to each other. We are all part of the web energy. We are the web of, the huge web of energies. That's all. We are all interconnected. The cells in me, the cell, the body cells in you, the body cells in me are vibrating the same frequency. They are all liking each other. They like each other. They coexist each other. You should never hate other person. You should never blame other person. You should never complain other person. Since all the cells are one and same, the cells in you, the cells in me, are operating with the same frequency, operating synchronously. There is a huge synchronization between one living being to other living being. Where is the question of hatredness? Where is the question of jealousy? Where is the question of unhappiness? 
where is the question of depression? Everything is energy. Everything is bliss. The whole universe is filled with the bliss. We just forgot. We became blindfolded. We are unable to identify. Who are we? We forgot our ourselves. We forgot our home. And we are searching for the way to reach the home again. The meditation takes you to your real home. That's why we are doing today. We are all practicing meditation day in, day out. In order to reach our home as early as possible. As soon as possible. Otherwise, you lost the way. We lost the way. After coming down to the earth planet, we lost the way how to reach our home. We are regaining in order to reach our own home. My dear friends, be with your natural breath. Go on to the breath, my dear friends.
last two minutes, my dear friends. Be with your natural breath. Final two minutes. Do not open the eye. Last two minutes. seconds my dear friends final 10 seconds do not open the eyes slowly slowly come to the body awareness slowly slowly come to the body awareness last 10 seconds keep coming to the body awareness slowly do not open the eyes suddenly at any cost. Be with your natural breath. Slowly come to the body awareness.
you have to use just 5 seconds. Why not 5 seconds? 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Slowly, slowly come back. Come back to body awareness. Slowly keep your both hands and your eyes for five five seconds. Just gently touch your eyes so that all the energy which is collected in your hands will be conveyed back to the physical body through the eyes, my dear friends. Five seconds, just keep on the eyes and then slowly take away the hands. Slowly open the eyes. Slowly come back to normal. Slowly come back. Friends, this is a English class, eight to nine. Okay. Attend new Umbutuare, attendagi, Canada Mother Betadre, Umbutuare in the Ature. Okay. This is English class 8 to 9. This is English language math. Open your speaker. Right. Yes, friends. <clears throat> you have done wonderful meditation till now. The deep meditation. You really enjoyed the complete you now the melodious music along with the deeperness of meditation. Definitely we received great amount of energy, my dear friends. Right. So, the friends, today's uh, space, spiritual wisdom, sharing of spiritual wisdom is about how to live in the present moment. Okay. How to live in the present moment. So let's understand this topic. Okay. So, friends, say everybody knows, all of us knows, right? All of us knows <clears throat> how to live in the present moment. But, so most of the times what happens is we forgot the, we, for, we forget the so-called the, at that moment, we forget everything. So then what happens? Our mind will be drifted somewhere else. That means the mind will be somewhere else. The physical body will be somewhere else. So that's how the, 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 the so-called the drift between. That means mind and your mind and physical body. They are not synchronized, basically. So your mind is here. So that your physical body is here. Your mind is somewhere else. You are thinking about something else, which is very far distant located. Far distant located. Either it may be a person, about person you may be thinking about some issue or whatever it may be. But your mind is not at, at present, it is not with you. Okay. Your body is here, but your mind is not within you. So that is called out of moment. What is the present moment? Present moment means your body, your mind, right, your breath all together. They have to be at this moment. They just have to do single job, not multiple jobs. Mind is doing something else. Your physical body is doing something else here, right? You are breathing, breathing, you, you are unconscious of breathing. Breathing is going on on its own. Of course, you don't need to do about breathing, right? Breathing is a, a natural phenomenon. It's an involuntary, involuntary activity, activity which will be keep happening. But as far as the mental activity, physical activity, they are totally separated. They are out of order. They are not in sync, in sync. That is called out of moment. Then what is present moment? What is inside moment or the so-called present of, you know, like uh, power of now. You can say power of now also. We also say embracing the current moment. Embracing the current moment. This time, current, at this time. Totally embracing. Entirely, that means complete embracing of present moment. Or you can say power of now. Whatever you call it as. It means your physical body, your mind has to be synchronized. Then what happened? The power of now, that means the now, whatever the present moment, the power will be so much. That means you can enjoy the power a lot, right? Friends, what happens is the basic problem here is with a human being. Let's understand more about this, okay? <clears throat> what happened is man tried to understand about all the things in the universe. In fact, he went to Chandrayaan. Recently, we have done Chandrayaan also. We went to Chandrayaan. And there we are started trying to study about the, you know, so-called moon. On the moon surface, so what all the things are there, 
how is the atmosphere, whether some minerals are there, whether the livability is there, water is there. So we are trying to understand about moon, isn't it? Yes, of course it's good. Like, you know, so the, with the scientific advancement and we try to do and we reach there and we try to understand. That's, all, that's also okay. And we try to invent some computer and we try to, you know, mobile technology, whatnot. So much outside, everything we know, everything we try to understand. If not, we don't know, we read the books. We read the books and we study the theory. Slowly we do the practicals and then we come to know, isn't it? But one pathetic, one pathetic thing, or you can say one neglected thing is here, right? Everybody, every, all the human beings, what they do is they don't know anything about this particular physical body. They don't know anything about the whole human system, first of all. How does it operate? See, for example, you purchase a mobile. <clears throat> you go to a shop and purchase a mobile. What do you do? You ask for a small manual. At least you ask for some guidance from the that uh, mobile shopper or whatever seller. What do you ask? How to operate this right now? Right from the screen and inside options, lot of you know uh, different different options. How to operate? Everything we try to understand. In fact, the children they explore so much into the mobile. They know every small small things also how to operate right? in the current days happening nowadays in the science in the advanced uh, you know, society whatever technical advanced society. So that way what happens is. We try to understand about everything around us, but we never try to understand about ourselves. This is the most problematic thing, my dear friends, with the human beings, especially. When he doesn't understand about himself, how do you expect, you know, how do you expect that? How do you operate the system? Can you operate the system without knowing? Suppose I have, I have given a mobile to you, purchase a mobile. I didn't tell you about anything about the mobile, right? You don't know anything about how to operate. Then you can't operate it. If you operate also what happens, it becomes a disaster or it becomes a some negative thing. It may not give result. In fact, it may damage also sometimes. If you don't know how you're trying to operate, isn't it? Similarly, what happened is about human being, he himself doesn't, he or she, they do not know about their own system. Either be it a physical body, be it a mental body or the source of this entire, you know, the entire human system, they do not know anything. They do not know anything, still they are trying to operate. You see now the what kind of disaster is going to happen. So that is where the problem now. Okay. That is the real problem with the human being. So you please understand. So now at least we are all here, get got together. Now we are trying to understand about self. We are going, we are connecting, we're connecting to our own breath, through our breath. We are just looking into ourselves. When we start looking into ourselves, you know, great things happen. That is the real power of now. Whenever you try to observe yourself, see so far what happened. So if at all, if I am suppose if I am sitting in the you know in the living room of my house, my home, my house, whatever, I'll be keep talking about so many other things with my family, right? With the uh, about you know your brother, sister, or otherwise uh, with respect to your job, with respect to outside, whatever you uh, that particular day you have gone through, right? All the things you'll be discussing. You never bother about yourself first of all, right? You never talk about, not even one word about you. That means what exactly is happening inside me, whether my thoughts are great or whether my thoughts are, you know, violent thoughts or negative thoughts, what I'm going through right now and how do, how do I control my thoughts, whether my energy levels are good or not and my physical body, what are the organs which are effectively working, not working. Did you care about all these things anytime? Did you think? Did you think about not even you have given at least small amount of time for you know exploring? It's called explore. In, in, I mean exploration. We can say not, not exploration. Basically, exploration. That means going inside, going inside, or you can say introspection. Also, sometimes we can call it an introspection. So these things, these things, particularly friends, it is missing a lot. Completely, we lost it. Okay, so we lost it. That is why. So what need to be done is in order to really live in the current moment, what do you need? You don't need anything from a, no, you don't need anything from the external world. What exactly you need is your real presence in the current moment is much more sufficient. That is exactly what you need. Your, your total presence, it's called total presence. What is the total presence? Your body, your mind, your breath, your soul, everything is at one, you know, at one particular situation or one particular moment. Then you do whatever you want. 
So this is called power of now. So that's where you, you can really feel the great amount of power within you. Let me tell you. And the way whatever, the way whatever you think, the, the way you think, the way you speak, the way you do the things, which will be definitely marvelous, amazing. The reason is you got a lot of power by being at now. You, you really, you really, you can uh, really uh, explore or you can uh, really find out within you the great amount of power will be there. The reason being you are at this current moment on a complete, you know, total presence you are feeling right now. You are already living in the present moment in total. That's very, very important, friends. For example, so most of the times what happened, either we go to the fast. The fast is already gone, isn't it? Past is gone. Gone is gone. It will not come back. So there is no there is no need of feeling guilty about the past. First of all, forget about the past. In the past, we might have done some mistakes, or somebody has done some mistake to to us, or we have done some negative karmas, or we have we might have achieved great things. Now we are not able to achieve, right? So you get a lot of comparisons, a lot of guilty feeling you will get when you go into the past. Anyway, you can't modify the past, as you know very well. You can never modify the past, isn't it? It's already completed. It is just something like you can say, whatever past is a past is like a dead dead thing. So dead thing you cannot you cannot make it survive again. So forget about the past. Keep it aside. When you keep it aside, the past friends mostly what happen. You can be able to be in the present. If you are getting to the past, what happen? So you feel some you know guiltiness within you, and you get a lot of negative thoughts about the in the past, whatever you, you may recollect some bad memories also. All that is possible. That is why what happened. Many of the people you see, the moment you sit, you know, in one particular place, your physical body is only present there, but your mind is so mind suddenly it goes to the past. Always see mind nature, especially. And let me tell you. You know, so even even uh, you uh, you know a great uh, our Patanjali Mahars also says what what does he say? Yoga ha chitta vritti niroda ha. Why does he say this statement? Such a great statement. What what does he tell is? See your your chitta your own mind has got a always attitude of going to the past, not a, being at one present present moment. It will never be at the present moment. It will always go either into the past or into the future. But both are doesn't exist. Both doesn't exist. What exactly exists is at present, whatever you are, whatever you are doing, whatever you are thinking, whatever you are speaking, that is the reality. That is the truth, isn't it? See, the physical body is the truth. What we are looking at here, that means the truth means I am not saying eternal truth, at least for the, for the time being, think that it's a reality. Because you are able to see this physical body. Are you able to see anything about all other things like you are trying to understand about galaxies, so much, you know, different, different technology, all these things. Are you able to see? Maybe you are able to study something and you are able to keep in, the, keep, in the, keep in the memory. That's all. But you know very much that you have physical body. You are feeling the presence of the physical body. You are living the present physical body. So live, live completely. That's what I'm trying to say. Live completely. Live 100%. When you do 100%, that itself is called living in the present moment. Nothing else required, my friends. If you live completely within yourself, that is called living in the present moment. Right? So that's why you should not, either should not go in the past or should not go to the future. If you go into the future, what happens? Future never exists, friends. Future never exists. And also, if you go on, expect, if you are going living in the future, what happens? You will have a lot of expectations. If those expectations are not met, Suppose if those expectations are not became true, what happened? Then you start getting some fear. Fear about the future. What may happen? If I don't get job, what may happen? If I don't get marks, what may happen? Right? And if I if I am not healthy, so and so, you know, in the future, then what may happen to my family? All these are actually the futuristic and which are expectation. That means which are not currently existing, but you think that you know you are thinking of you're thinking too much about the future then a lot of fear gets into you. When a lot of fear gets into you, what happened? Your health will be spoiled. Your physical health will be spoiled, my dear friends. So that is the reason. There is no future, there is no past. Both are never existing and no more, you are not required to spend any time towards this. Either fast, neither fast, nor the future, friends. Where you have to be there is 
you have to live in the current moment with yourself completely, my dear friends. So that is why, see, so we have wonderful path. We all know, you know, we are, we are learning it and we are con continuously practicing it. What is that wonderful path which keeps you in the present moment? Friends, try to remember, we have been given by great sages, by great rishis of India. So our ancient rishis, they have given us excellent tools in order to make you to live in the present moment. That is what, you know, that's what it is, meditation. Our meditation, friends. So how do you, how do you habituate to be in the present moment? Definitely, we need to live in the present moment means we need to live in the present moment. We need to live in the present moment also. For that, for that, we definitely need to have some method of, you know, some method or some kind of a, uh, the uh, path. So that particular path is meditation. In the meditation, what happens is we catch hold of our own breath, my dear friends. See, when you are with the breath, what happens? The breath is, breath is always in the present moment, isn't it? Breath is the one. See, either the past is not in the past is uh, gone and the future is yet to come, isn't it? Both are not existing now. But what exists is right now your physical body is there, and as long as your breath is going, your physical body is also surviving, very much, you know, very much out of survival. And the, when the breath is going inside and coming outside, that is exactly the present. In the present, it is happening, isn't it? So as it is happening in the present, just to catch hold of that. Just catch hold of that, sit silently, just go on observe that breath. Isn't it? So when you go on observe that breath, what will happen is definitely you are in the present moment. All your other thoughts will just you know, go off, flash off. So no thoughts will run in the mind when you are observing that breath, because the the, uh, the especially breath is related to the current moment, and you are observing it. The moment you start observing what happened, all other either maybe future thoughts or past thoughts. Both will just, you know, they get wiped off. When they get wiped off, then you catch hold of only your breath. Then what happens? Slowly, 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 what happens? You get into the thoughtless state. Thoughtless state and you also get something called, uh, of course, you can experience the power of now. Whenever you are with the breath, you will definitely experience the, the great stillness, the great peace in, within you. Isn't it? The great peace in, within you, the great stillness within you, you will be able to find out. And you can taste it also, isn't it? Then what happens? You become powerful, obviously. And of course, rest everything you know. When the when the mind becomes empty, when all the thoughts wiped out, and you are just living in the present moment with your breath, you are just synchronized to your breath. You are you and your breath both are just synchronized to each other. And then you are spending your time. That's called present. You know, living in the present moment. Our power of now. You will, of course you will experience in a, a greater manner. Isn't it? So that's how friends. So after afterwards, whatever the things happens in the meditation, we know very well, right? So huge amount of cosmic energy comes, and then it will energize our physical energy, our energy body, atric body. Then of course it will remove all the whatever the, your past life uh, karmas or whatever, right? You become healthy, you become physically, mentally healthy person, isn't it? And slowly, slowly you get into the path of uh, enlightenment. That means you get you start getting realization of yourself your inner core what exactly your true form you no know, true form reality you come to know slowly slowly then you become a master that's ultimate that's ultimate path so that's ultimately so just you see here by just being in the present moment by just being with the breath you see how far you are traveling how far you have gone right how much progress happened within your uh, you know within your own life you could see the the major change. You could find a major shift from the uh, you know from the current state to the the highest state of consciousness, isn't it? So that's how that is the power of now, my dear friends. That is the power of now. That is that's how if you live in the present moment, all the benefits are there. Every benefit you will get, right? Isn't it? So for example, there are other practices also which you can definitely try for for you know for being in the present moment. How do you practice? You know, this one one thing is. By go on observing your breath, that means by continuous, consistent practice of meditation, you are living in the present moment and especially the amount of awareness which is getting improved within you day to day, right? Day to day, it will go on and enhance. It will go on and enhance such a way that you get into something called highest amount of awareness. That awareness, that awareness, that stillness, 
that stillness and awareness, what it does is it keeps you in the present moment all the time, my dear friends. When you are in the present moment, what happens? You are not bothered about either past, you know, past event or the future is going to come. The future which is yet to come. You are not bothered about both the things, isn't it? Then you are, then what kind of state you will be? You will be in the state of fulfillment. You will be in the state of the complete sense of fulfillment and you will be in the state of complete peace within you. So when there is a peace within you, friends, let me tell you, all the inventions, great inventions by scientists or any other any other human being, whatever he does inventions, it happens out of stillness. It happens out of emptiness. It happens out of peace, peace, lot of peace within you. See, you must be having a lot of peace within you, friends. In order to have the peace within you, you must live, you must start living in the present moment. Neither you go past nor you go into the future. Forget both of them because they both they both doesn't exist in reality. Okay, they don't have any existence in the reality. Then why do you bother about them? You are just you know wasting your time by touching uh, the past and you know the future. Maybe you can have some kind of essence or you can have some kind of learnings from your past, but future always not required. Future is yet to come. Maybe you can do some planning, some kind of a planning you can do. You know, yourself, you can do some planning for the future, but you can't dictate the future or you can't decide the future. Then why do you worry about it? Just live in the present moment. Just the present moment. Whatever you're doing. For example, you are a cobbler. You are a cobbler and, you know, you're just going stitching the shoes or whatever. The, you're, you're just, you know, uh, the person is, pre, pre, cobbler is doing a, a lot of, uh, you know, the cobbling work or everything is done. He will be completely immersed into that activity. He is living in the present moment. That itself is great. So that's why I'm telling. So the being in the present moment, it leads to the enlightenment, my dear friends. It leads to so-called self-realization. Such a, such a power is there that being in the present moment, it's not easy to understand. It's not easy, it's not, it's not easy to underestimate. Such a powerful, such a powerful moment, whenever you are in the present moment, the power of now. You know, it's, it is such a state that it takes you to the current state to the so-called the enlightenment. It takes you from the current turbulent state to the highest conscious, highest conscious state. It takes you from this state to the self-realization, samadhi state. What not? Everything it does, my dear friends. At the same time, if you want to practice more and more this uh, living in the present moment, you can also, you know, try to have some more techniques in the daytime. No, whatever whatever you are doing works. For example, any work you are doing, what any work you are doing. So try to focus on that work only. Be conscious. Try to be conscious. Yes, I am doing this work. So let me do only this work, right? So it's not like no left, no right. There is no question of looking at left side. No question of looking at right side. Straight line. Okay. Straight, centered, focused. Just go on do that activity. It may be small thing. For example, I'm Mahatma Gandhi used to cut, you know, slowly the vegetables. Sitting, you know, such a great man he used to cut the vegetables with the greatest, you know, greatest awareness, greatest presence of mind. He used to do cutting of vegetables. Why Mahatma Gandhi? Do you think, you know, so it is uh, as as it is like a, is he doing a, for a time pass? No, every work, it is small work or big work or whatever it is. If you catch hold of, you know, if whatever you have in your hand. Whatever you have within in front of you and whatever you are undergoing at this moment, be in that in totality. Try to be in, in totality. Whenever you be in the in totality, that means your mind and your physical body and your breath, everything is synchronized. Now, when, when, when you are trying to uh, you know be in that state, so that is a that's that's a state what we can say it is that itself is an enlightenment state, my dear friends. That itself is an enlightenment state. Okay, so we, being in that state is really wonderful, and your life will also be blissful all the time. There is no question of there is no question of unhappiness. There is no question of depression. Nothing will come into us because I am not bothered about either past or the future. Who is going to bother me? Nothing is going to bother me. My own thoughts will bother me. Nobody else will bother. In fact, somebody, for example, somebody go on blame me. Is that it? So then, what I do? If he is any person or any, any any person for that matter, he go on blame me so that they all these words keep on coming to me, but I don't take them into my mind because I am in the present moment. 
I don't bother whatever is talking. Just it will come and it doesn't enter inside. It will just go back to the person. Whoever is born speaking, you know, filthy language, he receive back all those words. Same thing, you know, the same story, one of the incident happened in the Gautam Buddha's, Gautam Buddha's life also. Whenever, you know, he's going on, uh, going through the villages and, you know, start teaching the meditation. In one of the villages when he went, right, all his disciples were standing, you know, beside him. Then one lady came all of a sudden and she started scolding very badly. All with a filthy language, she started scolding him, right? So why did, why, why she's scolding is because his, uh, his own son, her own son started following Gautam Buddha as a, whatever, like, you know, as a bhakta, as a devotee. And then he left his home and then he's following the Gautam Buddha only. Then with that, what happened? She got irritated. She got irritated and she got angry on, on Gautam Buddha. She started, she started scolding him very badly. Then what Gautam Buddha, even his disciples were trying to stop her, trying to stop her and, you know, some, some kind of, uh, you know, activity, action, action they are trying to take. Then Gautam Buddha stopped all the disciples. Don't do anything. Let her talk whatever she wanted. So she go on, go on, scolded, scolded, and then finally, so from that, because she couldn't find any kind of a reaction from Gautam Buddha, no reaction. So there's no reaction, then what happened? She left. Then after she left, he, he has given a message to all his disciples. What, she, what he said is, nice words, see, never, never react to anybody, number one. Number two, whatever she, whatever she scolded or whatever, it is not gone inside me. It is not gone inside me, then it doesn't belong to me. All that belongs to her only. Because since it has not gone inside me, it is not, it's not my, these words are not for me. Right? When it is gone, not, gone, not gone inside, definitely it doesn't belong to me. Then what happened? I don't need to feel anything bad or, you know, I don't need to react. I'm always in the same state. My state is not changed. I'm happy. All the time I'm happy. Now also I'm happy. I never, I, I never listened to them. Everything gone back to her own. So this is how friends, whatever, see anything, anything, a negative situation, anything comes, what you need to do is you can take it and you can analyze it. Probably we can take some essence of that. But what we do is generally we take it and keep inside. Then the entire, like, you know, three days, four days, we go on, we go on, we go on, repeat the same situation. We go on, remind ourselves. Then what happens? You cannot live in the present moment. You lose the, you lose the essence of present moment. You lose the, you lose the beauty of present moment, isn't it? See, for example, if some, the nice music is going on around you. So nice music is going on around you. And then uh, you can go on, listen. Then if you really receive the, receive the music or if you go on, listen to music, what happened is going to create the great amount of vibration within you. But most of the times you observe because we are already, uh, you know, troubled with a lot of thoughts. Even the music, music doesn't play within us. The music doesn't receive to us. Such is the kind of turbulence, my dear friends. So with this turbulence, what happens is even you can't notice or you can't enjoy the, the great amount of environment around you. Even you can you can't enjoy the nature. Right? So the nature, when you go and see the nature all around you, so beautiful it is. So beautiful. So nature, the high amount of nature is there around you, but we are not able to enjoy it. The reason is we are have we are already occupied with many amount of thoughts, my dear friends. We are not able to live in the present moment. If you are really able to live in the present moment, everything is wondrous. I'm telling you, everything is wondrous. Right from your your child, right right from your child, your wife, your husband, everything looks so beautiful for you, isn't it? So so beautiful in the sense, like you know, you feel so happy, you so you feel so blissful all the time. But since you are not in the present moment, you are already troubled by a lot of thoughts, troubled by so many turbulent thoughts are already occupied in the mind. Then what happened? You have no chance of, you have no chance of, you know, identifying or you have no chance of uh, enjoying that beauty, enjoying that, you know, so-called the nature. Even uh, with, with respect to your surroundings, with respect to your, your own life, even others' life, whatever it may be, nothing, so nothing can be celebrated by you because you are already troubled, turbulent by, you are already troubled by so many thoughts and so many negative situations and always you are, either you are living in the past or you are trying to live in the future, which is, which both are not existing for you currently, isn't it? So like this friends, so if we go on discuss, so this living in the present moment is a really, you know, a beautiful thing, my dear friends. So let us uh, always be in the present moment, 
so let me suggest you be in the present moment enjoy the enjoy the enjoy the present moment and enjoy the great amount of power power of now especially you can enjoy the power of now and you can embrace the the current moment you completely absolutely embrace it then enjoy your life and have great amount of energy within you always and so then by doing meditation of course you can achieve this state without any doubt okay doubt the mind thank you so much dhanyavad to all of you yes yes shankara varanam shankara varanam uh, music pump and please yeah. send the shankara varanam instrumental yes. song but okay i will send in the namas okay. hmm? no 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 thank you thank you dhanyavad bye sir good evening sir yeah sir what is the uh, where is the our body where is the mind and atma and the atma and our uir and are located sir what is the definition for that sir yes uh, which are the things you want to know basically mind mind sir atma or uh, uir sir uir mind atma then uir uir the uir something they are telling sir our present something that our feelings are something uir they are telling sir why why you why are why you are that is tamil word sir <laughs> but uh, i don't know english chakra english urja urja might be huh seven chakra might be was saying will will means chakra chakras yeah okay, sir, please, might be please no sir no please tell me about uh, atma yeah. and uh, my mind only yeah. sir where it is okay one, there are two things one, one by one we go one by one okay so where is the mind never mind okay where is the mind never mind where is it it doesn't exist in one place okay it's a wrong concept basically like uh, people think that the mind is in the brain okay that's not correct mind is not in the brain mind is everywhere mind is everywhere mind mind means uh, in fact you need to understand one thing mind is nothing but a consciousness okay mind is not that you know what you think what the general definition general regular definition is collection of thoughts we call it as a collection of thoughts that just a conscious it doesn't it doesn't uh, exist any anymore for example if you sleep the conscious mind is disappeared nothing else is there isn't it if you go into meditation conscious mind is conscious mind is absent so it doesn't have reality it doesn't exist what exactly exist within you within within you within me within the whole cosmos that's called consciousness that is the real mind okay that real mind that's also called consciousness the other name is consciousness we sometimes call subconscious mind whatever so that consciousness is pervading a very smallest particle in this universe okay in that in that manner if you if you try to think the consciousness exists throughout the body throughout the body it exists it doesn't have any limitation and in fact i can tell you our brain doesn't have capability to hold the consciousness do you know this do you know this fact nobody no no one no one mind i mean no one any brain which are maybe albert einstein brain or you can say any other newton brain or it may be great scientist generally use we all we all respect scientists no in this current uh, modern world of course we don't respect all sankara acharya we respect uh, newton and uh, other uh, people isn't it but okay even then and that's why i'm referring to the scientist you take any scientist he cannot hold the consciousness the consciousness is such a huge such a vast such a vast that he, your brain cannot hold it okay you are you are just part of a consciousness you are part of consciousness but consciousness cannot be limited or it cannot be preserved in some place there is no there is no such a kind of a tool or there is no such a kind of a uh, way, uh, such a kind of a so called item object which will hold the entire consciousness it's highly impossible okay so that is why the consciousness is infinite and which exists everywhere which is which also exists within me where does it exist it exists throughout the body that's all okay in every cell see every cell every cell is a part of consciousness no doubt about it that's a that's a answer uh, i think for your question number 1 what is the other question one is uh, where is atma the, where atma, is atma atma sir atma, atma. Next, next one atma is nothing but consciousness only nothing else okay but only thing is 
Atma will also come along with the subconscious mind. What, what, what does it need? Especially soul. Soul when it is taken the birth from the supreme intelligence or we can say Paramatma, Srishti Karta, creator. So it always comes soul consciousness plus subconscious mind. Subconscious mind is something like, you know, a permanent memory, like a hard disk within your computer. There is, a, there is something called ROM and RAM. RAM is random access memory. Re, ROM is read-only memory. The read-only memory, something you can call it as a subconscious mind within us. What does it store is all your past lives will be part of that. The whole, the whole universe information will be part of that. Will be part of that. That is why Swami Vivekananda always says, the whole universe is within you. You do not need to search anything outside. Search within you. That's what he says. What is the meaning of it? The whole universe is within us means the, the macro cosmos in the form of micro cosmos, which is very much within us. Imagine such is the kind of power within us. But we cannot, we can never access it. We, we, we lost that, you know, that the key. The key is lost. Okay. Now meditation is the key which we are giving to everybody. All of us, you know, all of us trying to know how to use this key now in order to access to our inside, inside the whole, the vast universe, the vast knowledge, you can say, intelligence, you can say, information, you can say, whatever, whatever you say, whatever the name you want. But everything is within us, but we do not know how to access it. So that's why we teach meditation in order to access your own, the inside, so-called, you can say, the great, um, you can say like, you know, uh, the Gani. Gani means like, you know, what you can say in English, you can say it's a, um, it's a so valuable thing, priceless thing actually. That priceless thing is within us. So, in order to access meditation is the meditation is the best key. Okay, in order to access. So that is why Atma means the soul consciousness plus subconscious mind together. You can call it as a one individual Atma or you can say Jiva Atma. Understood? Yes, sir. Sir, uh, we can uh, say that uh, Atma is a permanent memory. This uh, mind is a temporary memory. We can we can take it as uh, like that, sir. Atma, Atma has got permanent memory. memory. Mind, mind is, yes, sir. Mind, mind, that's why I'm telling. See, in the generic sense, everybody use mind, mind. Okay? Mind means like just thinking mind. You call it as thinking mind. But as per the as far as this uh, spiritual technology, what we say is mind is equal to Mano, Chitta, Ankara, Buddhi. Mano, Chitta, Ankara, Buddhi. Okay. Mano, Chitta, Ankara, Buddhi. That means mind, intellect, and then ego, and then finally Chitta. Chitta means subconscious mind. So this is there are four parts within the mind also. You need to remember all this. Okay. The four parts, as you understand, the first one is conscious thinking mind. Second one is the ego. That is ego means I, I. Everything is I. Okay, that I-ness or uh, me, mine. So that's called ego. So ahankara. Then buddhi, intellect. Intellect comes by experience. You do some mistake, you gain some experience. You do some good thing, you also gain some experience. Out of wrongs and non, non, uh, you know, non-doings and doings or the correct, correct things or bad things, whatever you do throughout your life journey, you go on do some karmas and then you gain some experience about out of doing so many karmas and deeds. Okay, so that experience gives you some sense of you know that's called so so called that's called the intellect. The intellect will be procured by us with the, by the way of experience. By the way of experience, you will get the intellect. The fourth one is chitta. Chitta means this is called subconscious mind, permanent memory. The chitta is there with all of us, with everybody. The chitta is there. What does it carry? It carry about all your past life information and whatever you are going to, you know, the future, future lives. And also it carries the entire whole universe is within it. Within this, the whole universe is there. That's how scientists, what happen? So in the night time, so they keep doing on some particular invention, for example, that is not a, that is not a discovered, but they started exploring about a particular thing, a particular idea, basically. So they go on, do it in the daytime. In the night time before even before sleeping also they keep doing it okay and in the night time they sleep nicely they sleep in the, in the dream itself that will be clearly shown them that that will be clear that will be evident to them saying that okay this is the formula this is how you need to solve it 
then the next day morning they explore it to the same whatever they have seen in the dream they explore it and they try to attempt it and then solve it and then that becomes a great discovery to the entire world that's how friends what happens everything is within you you don't need to worry so it, it only thing is it doesn't show up with for this conscious mind it doesn't show up you just need to go into the complete silence either the deep sleep or the meditation deep meditation then obviously you get it to yourself and then you can extract whatever the information you wanted so that is called that is the, the power of meditation basically okay okay sir thanks a lot sir good night sir right. yes yes friends any any more questions sir one more thing i i told you that is soul sir s o u l soul sir soul, soul. I think, uh, yeah soul no soul is uh, that's what i told no soul consciousness uh, and uh, the subconscious mind together it's called individual atma right okay fine okay anyway, sir thanks sir i will i think i'll go to the next uh, session thank you so much